Welcome to this video on the new calendar function in Microsoft Teams. Now I know it's not really, really new, but it is still new because it's not fully in live. You can turn it on and off, but I didn't want to do this video until I'd had a chance to play around with it and see whether it really works for me. And to do that, you do have to spend some time turning it on and off, seeing what the functionality does, seeing whether it works for you. So now I'm in a position to give it a little bit of a run through and to talk about some of the functions and the features that I really like in this view. So I'm on a Windows PC. I'm on the app version of Teams. And you can see in the top right hand corner, I'm on calendar and I've got the new calendar toggle. So it's not something that I have to have right now. I can turn it on and off if I want to. And if you're like me and you're used to using Outlook to manage all of your meetings, I'm really happy at the moment going to Teams to join meetings. I find it super simple to do that. Um, but I use Outlook to do all my categories, to do all my meeting bookings, all of that stuff. And I've always done that for ages. So it's sort of like a, a learned behavior that I always go there to do that. And this new calendar is meant to bring Teams and Outlook a little bit closer so you don't have to go to Outlook as often. You can do some of the functionality a little bit more comfortable in Microsoft Teams. So you can see I've got a few meetings here. I have some categories and I'm going to switch on the new calendar. Now, obviously, it's not fully pushed out there yet, so you may not have it. You may let me be able to toggle it on and off. Some functions do seem to behave a little bit weird. And that may be just that my device has a number of different accounts on it. So sometimes it gets a little bit confused. But let's have a look and see what it does. So I'm going to toggle on the new calendar. And you can see it's popped up a little bit further down. Now, if I scroll off, you can see straight away there's an issue. It's not pulled through my categories. And that may be because of some functionality in that calendar still not working. Or it may just be contradicting with some of the other accounts on my device. Because like I said, I have multiple Microsoft accounts on here. So that I can do different tasks and activities. I have my personal and I have my work. But you can see the meetings have pulled through. And it looks ever so slightly different. Now, one thing that does annoy me a little bit is there's two scroll bars on the right hand side. So there's a scroll bar and the in the actual window is going to take me up and down in my calendar for the times. But then I need to go to the one on the right hand side to scroll to the top to see the functions. That irritates me a little bit. I think they should always be there and I should just scroll within. But I do have my screen set slightly smaller as well for this recording. So it may not be the same for you, but definitely something that I seem to have picked up. You've got some nice functionality at the top. So in the um, in the days themselves, you can see I'm on Tuesday and I can set where I am. So if I work hybrid with a team and I want to tell them that I'm going to be in the office on Wednesday, Thursday, so we can do some in-person meetings, I can set that up on here or I can just say that I'm remote all the time, just by clicking on the little drop with the plus in the middle. And then which days do I usually go in the office or I work fully remotely? Now I work fully remotely, so I would select that option, but it is great there. It's not mandatory, you don't have to do it, but if people keep inviting you to face-to-face -face meetings when you're not gonna be there, it might be a bit of functionality that you want to use. Obviously in the top left-hand corner, you can toggle between the weeks, the days, the months, clicking on the calendars, all sorts of great things to move around with your calendar. So that functionality is really nice. But as I move towards the right, there's other functionality here. So let's have a look what's available. And like I said, yours just might be reordered slightly if your view is set differently. So if I go to more options, you can see I'm currently in the work week, which again is a really nice feature that I always use in Outlook. I don't know about everyone who's listening to this video, but I'm not interested in Saturday and Sunday when I'm during my work week. I'm not going to have meetings there. I'm not going to be planning my work because that's my days off. So work week is super important for me. But if you want to change your view to something else, you can see you've got the option there. You can also change your time scale. I set it to 30 minutes, but you can have slightly different. And then you can save a view as well if you want to go back to it, which I think is quite a nice little bit of functionality. The filter options are useful because you can filter by categories. So if you set your categories up, you can filter by recurring meetings, 
in-person meetings, all sorts of options. So let's just click on one to show or hover over one to show what that looks like. So you can see it's pulling up different categories. That is not the categories that are set um, on there, which is why the colors are not coming up properly. But we can filter by these. So if you've got a, a category color for a project that you're working on, you can absolutely filter by that. And then you can just see the meetings and the impact that's having on your diary, which I think is really useful. And then, like I said, recurrence, so those reoccurring meetings that happen all the time. I like to put my lunch in, otherwise people tend to book over it, and then I end up just working through, and I'm tired, and I'm grumpy, and I'm not fully productive. So I try and block those out, and obviously I'm flexible as and when I need to. But then there's also weekly or monthly meetings that you have to put in, one-to-ones, things like that. So your reoccurring meetings, you can filter by. And also, if you need to be in the office, if you're setting your hybrid days, your office days, then filter by in-person might be quite useful for you as well. So filters are really great. You've got the share option there, so you can share and you can print even, sets it to a nice print. Plus, you've also got calendar settings. So when I open up calendar settings, it feels like I'm in Outlook. This is absolutely an Outlook view, which is really useful because I just feel super comfortable with this. So this bit I really, really like. And I can obviously go in here on the left hand side and view different calendar settings and change what I need to. Using dynamic column widths will make the day that you're currently on bigger. So it just pops out to you, which you might find quite useful. And also you can set other time zones, which I already have an East Coast time zone in there because I work with a lot of people over the pond. Then it's useful to know what time zones they're on. You can add multiple ones as well. So they will appear in your calendar. I have them set in my Outlook calendar, but having them set up in Teams is, is just as good because then I don't have to go back and see what time it currently is. And you can work it out, but sometimes I just want it to be visible on the screen. So I'm super clear what time it is in the time zone that that person signed. So I'm not interrupting them or I understand why they haven't got back to me at that point. So that's, again, I find that really, really useful. And it just feels so much like Outlook at this point. I feel very, very comfortable. Let us know how you feel in the comments as well. And you can see you've got other functionality there. And if I do quickly just scroll down and obviously look at different calendar options down the left, you can see I can do all my shorten events, like so shorten it by five minutes to have a standard of 25 minutes rather than half an hour and things like that and set how I want to manage my invitations and declined events. If I want the weather, I can turn it on or off there, which is quite useful. Events from emails, shared calendars which again is a really great functionality. I haven't got it on this device, but on my work device, I have my personal email and a shared email that we share as a team. And you can have them both on here. Now, the only thing is they don't tend to show up side by side in the view that I've got. I can see them on the same one, which is a bit confusing and just a bit full. I like in Outlook that I can see them side by side. So maybe that bit of functionality is coming or I don't have that currently on any device that I have access to. Bookings with me if you use Microsoft Bookings and then obviously work hours and locations. Again, it just feels so much like Outlook. You would not believe I'm absolutely in Microsoft Teams right now. This feels so comfortable. So you can set all of that information in there and all of it generally does pull through anywhere. But I think there's some quirks that we're working out. And like I said, it may be that I've got multiple accounts on this device. So it just gets a little bit confused at times, depending on which ones I'm signed into. Coming out of there, you've still got your meet now option. So you can start a meeting at any point. And then obviously you've got your new event. So you can create different events, not just meetings directly in Teams. Now, if I click on that drop down arrow, you can see the ones that are available for the account that I'm in right now. So a webinar, town hall, virtual appointment would be the general ones. And what I noticed recently as well is the view all option at the bottom. Now, when I'm thinking about a bigger meeting, I always get a little bit confused with what the functionality is in each type of those meetings. So what the view all will allow you to do, if you click on it, it will just open up a nice view and give you some key bits of functionality for each of those types of meetings, of events. So I know if I want to send emails out, if I want users to register, then webinar is a really great option. 
if I want a green room, then a webinar and town hall is, again, a really great option. If I want something super simple for users, then virtual appointment might be really great because it's an easy join, the simplified invites, and it's a browser experience. So if users don't use Teams, if they are guests, then that will work really, really nicely for them. And this view will just help you understand a little bit more about those. So you can just pick the right option. There's nothing worse than setting something up and then realize, ah, selected the wrong option. I'm going to have to delete all that effort and go in and select the right one. And obviously from this screen, you can click schedule as well and start working through the process to set them up. So that's something I, put, I noticed recently on my versions. And I just thought that was super cool, super interesting. Because again, you don't use them that often unless you're constantly working on events and functionality changes so often, it's useful to come in and have a quick view and see what is going on. So ones I'm really, really interested in there. And obviously, if I don't like this and I just want to at the moment go back to my standard calendar, I'm just going to toggle that off. I just have the ability to add feedback if I want to. If there's something that's really not worked, then do key it in so they can update it. They can make it work better for us and you can skip feedback if you want to or you can stay in the new calendar if you press that by accident. If I skip that feedback, it just takes me nicely back into my standard calendar. It's trying to get me to go into the new calendar. It's desperate to try and get me in there, but it's not fully working for me at the moment. But I can definitely see how there will be some great benefits to having that in there going forward. So do let us know in the comments if you use that, if you find it interesting. Does it feel a little bit more like Outlook to you? As it definitely does to me, I can see some parallels. The settings that pop up felt really comfortable. I'm used to going in there and setting up my calendars the way that I want to. But... At the moment, this view just feels good for me, but I think I will switch at some point. Do let me know what you are thinking. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.